All right, welcome back to another episode of Wet Paint, Wet paint dry, dry, dry Humor. It's been a while since I've been able to get back to the table to do some painting, but with the lockdown up here in Ontario, it's a perfect time to get back to painting and just put up these videos. And these videos are just about me kind of going through painting different things every week, keeping it simple. I think the last episode was maybe a bit too long, and I'm going to keep that in mind. So I might not even finish certain projects, but I'm going to go through and maybe keep this to like half an hour and 45 minutes. But still, let's see what happens. Today, I'm going to paint this well. It's a WizKids model, and I really like these. I find that they come pre-spray painted, and the, the paint goes on really nice. I find the washes go into the cracks really well. And I do have a well, but on this one, I'm going to make sure that it's a well that's in a grassy field. I made the other well like a stone base so that it could be in towns but i have this other great well that i'm going to paint and give it a grass base i should hopefully be able to do this in like half an hour and 45 minutes this isn't a complicated piece and i don't often paint too much terrain i suppose i paint more minis than terrain but i do like painting terrain and it can be usually a bit quicker so here we go we're going to see what happens with this and just get started so I am just going to use this big brush that I have to do the base coats for everything. So I'm going to use a simple gray, brown for wood, um, maybe a little bit of silver to give the handle a bit of a metal appearance, and some blue for the water. I like it. They kind of have, it's hard to maybe see, but they have that kind of translucent, um, I guess I don't know what it is. I guess it's translucent plastic. Um, but it looks cool for water. So I'll do it lightly and I don't really have to do much for this guy. So let's get going here. Good old fashioned gray. Again, I use Citadel paints. And the key here is that I'm gonna use Celestial, Celestra gray. Cool. And if you watched the last video, it's true. I'm just, I'm going through the paints I have to get rid of them and use them all up. Try not to buy any more paints. I mean, if in a perfect world, I would be um, grabbing pre-painted pre stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but it can be relaxing to paint. And so basically, that's what I'm doing. Relaxing, painting, my own little world, the well. Just put a little water on my brush, spread this grayness around. And the cool part is, yeah, you don't need to really take a lot of time for this. And I don't really care about making mistakes either. And hopefully in the future I will be doing more of these videos and I'll be taking suggestions about what type of projects to work on in the future as people kind of might have some different ideas or there'll be different things each week I do this. The well though is a key. I feel like terrain piece that I do think is beautiful to have. And like I said, I do have one already, but I feel as though wells are basically indispensable. You know, you can put them anywhere. They can just be in a field. It can be an abandoned well. It can be a well uh, in a city, like I said, or fields or just by one cottage. So that's why I think it's a versatile piece as opposed to some other terrain pieces. Even with this grade, like getting every spot, right? There's no real um, need to do that as I'm going to wash it over with a black and it will fill in any of that stuff. And in this case, any gray left over or I would say white spots could look like cool highlighting. So a happy, happy mistakes can happen and that's why bada boom, bada bing, paint it, done. Let that dry for a second. And then, now this base, I didn't, I didn't undercoat it. I didn't do that, which is a little bit, I'd say that I'd prefer to undercoat this. However, I'm just gonna go 
with a base paint. Well, it's not even a base paint, it's a layer paint. I was looking up all the new types of Citadel paints. There's layer paints, base paints, air paints, and there was technical paints and texture paints, but they switched, I just found out, they switched the texture paints to be also called technical paints. So there's some cool texture paints that I am gonna use, Armageddon Dust, on this base that I at first hated, <laughs> and now I've grown to really like how quick and easy Armageddon dust can be used. I don't think I was properly applying it in the best way and now I'm kind of getting how you can really use it. It is quick and it does look good. So I am going to use that Armageddon dust on this base. But technically it's not a texture paint anymore, it's a technical paint. I feel in the last video I was talking about some of the technical paints that I think were used for more like jewels, glowing things, and I'm getting a little bit better at that. I have been painting a little bit and I do feel that I'm kind of understanding when to use the paint. Um, and of course, if you have any ideas of how to use the technical paint, just tell me in the comments. I am trying to improve painting. It's not my focus here on the channel. However, it is a necessary, I think, part of this hobby. And I do love, and I, and I do get into it. I do like it. But I'm all about the quick and dirty job. The quick, the dirty job, the cheap job. <laughs> and uh, I do have st I do have standards though. Again, if there, if some things are bad, I won't. I'll take my time on them. Or certain models, I take more time on if I'm super interested. But again, something generic and kind of quick and easy like this, eh, just get it. Make sure it looks decent. It fits in. Um, you know, I could maybe on close inspection. You know, I'm going to try and hold this up. On close inspection, you might be like, oh, you didn't spread it evenly enough or something like that. But again, I'm going to kind of give myself a little bit of a pass on that. Okay, cool. So still a little wet. However, I am trying to do this in a timely fashion. I find I'm a little bit of a slow painter. I like to reflect, sit back, take these breaks. However, that means I'm, I might be going too slow. And as you notice, I've got my, again, my long hair has been growing. It's getting unwieldy. I need a haircut soon, but now isn't especially a good time for that type of thing. And uh, I just got a deal. Just got a deal. First world problems, right? Okay, so now I'm going to apply the brown. don't really mind that I'm hitting everything. Oh, there's a little bit of rope here. Whatever. Because, especially, I'm going to highlight with, I will probably highlight it with Xandri Dust, a tan type of color. One of my favorite highlighting discoveries. Tan just looks good usually on a lot of things. Instead of using a white, or instead of just using a lighter brown, which I suppose maybe Tan is a little bit of a, a whiter brown. But that's what I like about it. It's like I'll highlight with tan, again, using a dry brushing type of highlighting technique. And it's perfect because it makes the, the ropes look like they're ropes. And I didn't have to paint them some different color and then tan and then highlight that a separate color. And I suppose you could if you want to be really cool about this. However, I want to be uncool about it. Oh no, I'm getting brown on the stones. But perhaps that'll just give it that earthy look. <laughs> I've become good at finding any possible excuse to excuse my errors when I paint. I've become very good at that. And I'd almost argue that it's something you should have. Because otherwise you'll get frustrated and then you'll just get like, eh, I don't want to do it, you know? I don't want to paint because I know I'm gonna have to get into this stringent concentration mode and get everything in the lines and I don't feel like going to that headspace. That's why I think painting, back to the relaxation, it's like, you know what? I'm just gonna take it easy. Not worry about some of that type of stuff. 
so that I want to come back to the table. You know, I want to come back to the table. I want to feel accomplished. I want to feel like I'm getting things done. So no use crying over spilt brown paint. Another thing is keeping the water nice and warm. You know, you, you I don't know if it's entirely necessary, but I do have a thing where if you do have heated water, I do think the paint just flows better with the heated water. I'm sure it's the heat is spreading the, the molecules around and making it easier to spread. I don't know if I'm scientifically correct on that, but that's my hypothesis. And I do like it, but again, once it cools down, I'm not going to go and uh, refill the refill it with hot water. I'm not that OCD about it, right? But I'd argue if I was trying to paint in some sort of competition, I'd probably do everything. You know, I'd keep my water warm, make sure the paints are nice and watery, make sure I'm using not just big sloppy brushes and really trying to get in there, right? <laughs> but as I've said before, that's not what this show's about. This is the show, or this little time that I'm having, is just about painting, relaxing, talking about some things. And like I said, there might be news on this type of show about things that are coming up on the channel. I, I, we were supposed to have some more videos out, however, the lockdown and some of that thing has delayed some of those projects. Getting some live games going of us playing at the table is something that I really want to do. Again, it was thwarted. So we're going to come up with some other ways for different content and keep going with some of the mini talks and dungeon design drive-bys and all that type of thing uh, in the meantime. Just checking the base. Just checking the base, just checking the time. I'm at about 13 minutes right now, according to my computer. And so if I was to say this is 30 minutes, I suppose I have 15 minutes to finish this. I think in this case it is probably possible. But now I'm gonna take a little break here. I think it's a little sticky. I'm gonna wait one more second so that I can put the green on. And you'll see that the white wasn't, like I didn't apply it very consistently because I know that I'm gonna put green over top of it. Just I'm hoping the green will stick to the white now enough. Okay. <laughs> I've had enough waiting. If it's serviceable, it's serviceable. The next uh, wet paint dry humors will be models though. I do wanna maybe stress that, that I will mostly be doing miniature painting if anyone is interested in that. And again, perhaps you know you throw this on, just paint along with me, share some of your tips in the comments below. Just kind of talk about um, some different ideas about that uh, this aspect of the hobby, right? I mentioned in the last video I I prefer or I enjoy the storytelling aspect of D&D the most, you know, crafting the world, doing the DM thing and putting people into tough situations and I love seeing what they do and just having like a fun cool story to go with it. So that's like my main focus. However, I have also mentioned before that I do enjoy the model, miniature, scenery aspect of D&D. &D. Not so much the theater of the mind, which I have played and I have done and I do see the merits of that. And even some of these cool online programs, Roll20 and D&D um, &D Beyond, where I'm like, oh, that's maybe a little bit easier and can flow better and you can be a little bit more, uh, you can adapt on the fly a little more easily. Whereas like, oh God, what am I gonna do? Like. You know, if you have seen some of my dungeon designs where it is like, maybe it feels to you that, well, that's just like a lot of organization. And then what happens if the players want to do something totally different? And so I'm going to hopefully do some different ones that are a little bit more easy to um, implement on the fly or, or almost like using the less is more just to build the idea of how to use the terrain kind of quickly, efficiently, and make it worthwhile so I'm painting this Lauren forest as a darker green base but I did it pretty watery I did it pretty light 
As I mentioned, I am going to be using the technical paint, Armageddon Dust, to go over it. So I'm going to have to repaint over that too. That's maybe the one thing that might take me too long. And perhaps I didn't even need to do it green there. And the well is going to cover most of the base as well. However, like I've glued things and then I do the bases, but I find that, or I'm finding, that on some of these like one shot pieces, like maybe not like a whole squad of guys, like I want them on the bases, but if it's just like one thing, I like doing the base ahead of time, even though you could argue it's a waste of paint and it's a waste of possibly time. However, there's just something about once I get the washes going, it's almost like I like just fully completing this so I don't have to touch it again. Fully completing that so, so there's no runoff from washes or I'm not over dry brushing highlights and then it's just getting messy. So it's just like fully complete the base and then fully complete the well and just glue it on. I just kind of touched up a unicorn model, which I'll maybe do a mini talk on. I've been just, I've been thinking the next mini talk will be unicorns. So I have two of them and I've modified a couple just from like standard little toys, but repainted them and made them all like fresh looking. So I might be doing a talk on unicorns and how to use them in the game and just, again, how to maybe easily acquire some of those things from just like toy stores and then just, yeah, you buy a base, you put the thing on, you repaint it, it looks like perfect and it costs me not as much as like a unicorn D&D model. And again, unicorns, you know, I find that I haven't... I'm going to explain a few ideas of how they can be used, but I haven't really used them too much in my game. Um, it's sometimes tough. I guess I believe unicorns are most of, are more good than bad. And then so it is true. Why would I challenge a group by using a unicorn monster when in my opinion I have a bias that unicorns are usually good creatures? So even if people stumble across them, they don't fight them. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about how that it can make more sense if you have that dilemma at all. Maybe you use like evil unicorns, I don't know. I just, that's foreign to me. And I'm gonna think about it more as I dive into what the unicorn can do. And see, the more I'm talking about it, I think I'm definitely gonna do unicorns because it's an interesting one to me that, um, like they're pretty powerful because I have used it in a campaign and for a different reason, which I'll talk about. Um, you can probably guess, but, It can be kind of cool, but anyways, they can be cool. All right. Like I said, it's like gray, brown, the water. Um, I'm going to use this Night Haunt Gloom. It's a technical paint. Back to that. It's more watery. It's shiny. It's supposed to glow, maybe. So I'm going to put that on that. I'm gonna put that in on top of the water there. And this is a bit waterier, this technical paint, if you've tried it. So it does flow nice. So it does have its uses. I'm starting to be a little more open to it. I'm starting to read up on the science of the paints, you know, it's like the bases, it, it does make sense. The base paints are thicker, the layer paints are a little bit less thick. Technical paints are for doing cool extra little things and it's a little, again, not as thick. And then there's these air paints. Don't really understand those ones. I think they're really thin and you can use like an air gun to to, to spray your models, I guess. I, I don't get it. So if you're looking for actual real painting tips, <laughs> again, this isn't this isn't the spot for like actual real painting tips. This is just like a journey of, if you're learning, I'm learning, and that's all there is to it. I think as long as you're willing to experiment, it is true. I keep trying to find ways to use the technical paint until I find a way that I like to use it. And in this case, I kind of like this greenish blue water. Oh right, and there's dry paints too. I have a dry paint that's used for dry brushing. I'm still a little bit debating that too. It's like, what, I'm gonna buy all the dry paints when really I can just use layer paints and 
use the dry brushing technique. That's how I've always done it. So to suggest that I need the dry paints or I guess it's helpful. It starts, those are a little bit thicker and drier. So maybe it is just that if I could just use that right away, it would be better. However, again, or I just seem like it's almost like an unnecessary step. Again, if you know how to use it or why it's better than just using a layer of paint, then let me know. I say these things, but my mind is also open and my ears are open to other ideas. Knowing that I am just, you know, at the tip of the iceberg of the whole painting world. There we go. Easy. Basically, three colors. I mean, and even I think I'm gonna black wash the whole thing. I was gonna brown, I could brown wash. Again, brown wash, black wash, green wash. Those are the washes I have. I think I expressed that it would be cool to have washes for all the colors. I've been seeing how it could be nice. Uh, however, I was talking with a friend who really just prefers the black wash. Like he's finding he prefers the black wash because it does just define everything. Just that little bit better. It just really defines every section. And Again, I can see that point of view too. So, however, for time's sake, not like it's that much more time, but for time's sake, I'm gonna use black on, I think, everything. See, yeah, the blue wash for the actual water. I'm trying to hold that, hopefully this focuses. The blue wash with the water would be cool, eh? Because then I think It'd be worth it to have blue wash. Huh. Right, let's just hold that out there for a bit. Well, we're at about 25 minutes, too. And I realize as I'm doing this that my head's been kind of cut off when I lean in to the, to the camera. So that's something I'll have to fix for next time, too. Always learning. Always trying to figure out how to do some of this stuff better more efficiently and that's what i hope you've seen even if you've watched some of my videos at least i hope you can see progress even if you're not maybe a fan of some of what i'm doing hopefully you can at least see the progress and then i am open to trying new things and changing things and i want to do that I, i'm looking to get better at not only producing content but everything becoming a better dm becoming a better painter becoming uh better at creating content all those things it's always like a it's a drive and so I feel like I'm getting closer and closer with every new video I, I put out. Right, I did get that green a little bit watery, so it's taking a while to dry. Like I said, another cool thing which I was debating doing is I should have something else here that while things are drying, I'm painting another thing. That's drying, back and forth, back and forth. Again, I didn't want to overwhelm myself as I am trying to be time sensitive about this. However, let me know, like if it's cool to have like an hour video of me just talking and going on, awesome. Or is it better that it's just short and quick and I show more of the end result later, you know, next episode, maybe at the start of every time I show the finished product if I don't happen to finish it or it's true, maybe it's better. No, you finish everything no matter how long it takes. I've been debating that. Like I said, this time I'm gonna try and do a quick one just to see how it goes. It's an experiment, quick video, easy to paint, object, and let's see how that goes. I think if I was see, just observing this, if I was going to take my time, I, would, I think I would do cool things. Like every stone would be a different color, like black, tan, white, gray. I'd make it all look cool. Like if this was uh, maybe a more a well in a rich area of town. But like I said, I do have a town well that's on a stone base. So I'm gonna make this a little more rustic, I think. Even some greens and some vines, I guess you could put in there too. But I'm gonna keep it simple. Just gray, black, and I'll highlight. I probably will use white for the, although I could just use tan. But I have a feeling I'm still, I'm gonna use white for the stone and tan for the wood. 
and then yeah, maybe a little bit of silver. Sometimes I like to put the metallic paints on the water and things like that too. It can be a little, just a touch, like a silver, a, sh a silver highlight or a silver touch to give if you want the water to be a little bit more magical, or just catch that light in the right way. It's like a small thing you can do that makes things look really cool. So we'll see what happens when I get there. Anyways, enough talk. I've got to. I've got to go. I've got to get this, n yeah, Nuln oil. See, I'm running out. I am going to be uh, ordering a few more paints, the ones that are necessary. So I find um, the black wash and the, and the brown wash. They do last a while, I'd say. However, uh, I, I do know that other people, I think, get bigger bottles of wash because you do use it a lot. And I think at the end of the day, wash is wash. Or you could even, if you thought it was maybe not as good, you could water it down. So yeah, maybe this isn't the smartest, most economical purchase. However, I find that it's gotten me through a lot. Still have some, and I will order another one from Place Legends Warehouse. That's my, the local store. So check them out. They have a lot of cool stuff. I'm not affiliated with them, but I'm hoping to reach out with them in some way in the future, hopefully, because um, I don't know. They have all they have a lot of the hobby uh, needs I require, and they're in Canada, which is where I am. So I like to try and support them in that. Put in the wash, apply it how you like it. I've been fun I feel like I've been critiquing some of my things and noticing that I've been a little too maybe generous with the wash. I'm just like, oh yeah, it'll all dry and fill in the cracks and it'll all be good and don't worry about it, just shovel it on, right? Like it always looks good in the end. But I've been noticing that, you know, it can pool if you're not too careful in ways that do look a little not great. So I think it's something that I, I want to take a little bit more care in. Although I'd argue when I'm painting models. I think in this case, it's hard to lose. It's hard to mess this up. Because <laughs> it's just a big open space. And like I said, I like these WizKids plastic unpainted things because I do find that the definition and the cracks are just really good compared to some of those old Warhammer models that I will probably paint and have been painting. I find some of those old plastic models don't have the definition and it can be a real pain in the butt. And I know it's like, oh, I'm not a bad painter. It's the model, right? It's the model. I don't want to blame the model. However, I don't know. I think there's something to be said about that. It's like, okay, well, you painted the best you could, but the model itself is just not conducive to good paint good jobs. Paint jobs. <laughs> like I said, I find any excuse that I'm like, yeah, I'm not, that's why it's like that. It's just the model or... <laughs> see, and look at, see some of those people use those cool little like corks or those things that can hold um, the model so you don't get paint all over your fingers. And I'm looking at them, I'm like, ah, should I get one? Is that the way? You know, it does make sense to me. Like, I'm not arguing with the sense of it. I do obviously think it makes sense and might be the optimal way to paint. But old habits die hard. I'm just used to hunching my back over, painting really close, or, okay, I'm holding it up. But, and again, putting my fingers on the wet paint it doesn't make sense. However, I don't. I can't just break that habit. This is how I paint, you know? Back to my some of my original thoughts. I don't want this to be a paint in the ass. I want this to be just like I want to paint. Uh, to learn a new way of holding the model and do all that, I think would just stall me. It will just be like, oh great, I don't really want to paint with that thing and I'll do it tomorrow. And I don't want to do that. I think anyone who's collected a lot of miniatures or what, whatever it is, Warhammer or anything like that, or D&D models to paint, like there's a, there's a point. There's a threshold of I've painted. 
so much that I don't think I want to paint for a while <laughs> ever again. And here we go, we're dry enough. And I'm gonna get that Armageddon dust. Uh oh, 33 minutes. Like I said, maybe 45 minutes. We'll see, we'll see. Oh! Good thing this paint is texture paint. <laughs> it didn't spill everywhere, everybody. I'm okay. And the paint is okay, more importantly. But right, I'm finding that when you use this texture paint, it's the dabbing. You really gotta dab it a little bit more. I think I was trying to spread it like other paints, like evenly and nicely, but that's not what you're going for. You're going for more of a dab and clumpiness. So I'm just gonna kinda dab it and put it all around. I am running out of this, so again, I'm, I'm getting a, um, that's why I found out all about the technical paints and the texture paints being renamed, because I do, I'm like, oh, you got me, Armageddon Dust. I like, I like using it. You've won me over. My heart is yours, Armageddon Dust. And now I have to purchase you, because I do think, instead of gluing the base, flocking it, which I do do on doo-doo, which I do on certain models. However, I'm finding that unless it's like a special thing. I do have some dragons and things I'm gonna bring out here to paint at some point, which are amazing. And I'm probably gonna take more time on the base. Those are centerpiece type models. I'll probably add some cool things. There's some really cool uh, like grass tufts and things you can get that are pretty cheap that to me, like you stick on and it changes the entire like it just takes it to a whole nother level. For all you Key and Peel fans out there, I always liked that bit. <laughs> Taking things to a whole nother level. But it does. So then we'll do some of that gluing, using flocks and things back to that. Yeah, I was, I was used to flocks when I was younger and then it seems like that's become a bit, I don't wanna say passe, I'm sure there's people using it. However, at least with Games Workshop, they've gotten away from that. And I do, and again, this texture paint has kind of won me over. It's like, I don't need all that flock and mess and glue. And like I said, I ruin a lot of brushes by gluing and then just being like, ah, and then I ruin the brush. So I rather almost take that out of the equation. Okay. Let's just zoom that in. Maybe it's hard to see the texture. But if you can't see it, trust me, it's perfectly done. Trust me, every DM, right? Just trust your DM. They're not trying to kill you. And again, I find like, okay, I'll show this now, but it is true until the wash dries, sometimes, like, like that's not even that even, but until the wash dries, it can look like, oh God, I made a terrible mistake. Yeah, I, I put too much wash on it. But I find once it dries, you'll be like, oh, oh, okay. It's not, 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 show, not. Show, show. And as I said, once we do do the dry brushing, it will cover up a lot of that extra wash that m might be on a some extra wash that might be on the flatter surfaces. So we'll kind of just, uh, when I'm dry brushing, I'll take a little bit more, pay a little bit more attention to where the black has gone, maybe a little bit too off. But again, leaving some and covering others will give it, I think, a more realistic look. Yeah, like, that thing's a little bit moist. <laughs> Everyone's favorite word. I'll just take a couple of minutes. I feel like I have seven minutes. 
and talk about my friend over here, Sir Gawain, who is this cool thing that's been in my household for a long time. And why I call him Sir Gawain is because I'm a fan of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, the poem that I, at university we went over it and I don't know what it was, but I love that story. I love the whole idea of it. The Green Knight, Sir Gawain is this pure knight who's supposed to, you know, the Green Knight just rolls into King Arthur's court and basically challenges them to be like, you guys are not as cool as you think you are. And Sir, and Sir Gawain's like, the king's not even gonna respond to you because he's so great. I'm gonna step in and I'm gonna take you down at, on his behalf, basically. Um, and he's known as like the most pure, noble knight that in all of King Arthur's court. So then he has to go on this crazy quest to confront the Green Knight, who's basically like, okay, come find me um, in a year's time or something. I can't remember all the details, but then in a classic D&D type of thing, Sir Gawain goes on that quest to fight the Green Knight. And uh, in the end, though, basically, Sir Gawain betrays his virtues because he takes a magical garter from a princess woman or something that along his journey he's met, he meets and she's like, hey, you're gonna go fight and, and this is dangerous. Like, take this at least with you to like help protect you and this and this and that. So then he takes it basically like, okay, like I'll take it, blah, 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 blah. And basically at that point when he meets the Green Knight, the Green Knight learns of this, I can't remember how, and basically he shows Sir Gawain his lack of faith in a sense that he's put a lot of his, in a sense like he was afraid. He had to take this like magical amulet to protect himself um, and basically betrayed his virtues. I can't remember all the details in that sense, but I kind of love that. So I forget how it all kind of ends, to be honest with you, but uh, I just always like that. Like Sir Gawain realizes he kind of abandoned his, you know, faith in God, faith in the king, his knightly virtues. He was basically putting his faith in this, um, piece of this article or this lock of hair or whatever it was from this woman and uh, I don't know it was just like it's just a cool story I'd actually have to reread it to kind of I forget exactly what happens um, but basically it is kind of like Sir Gawain is defeated in a sense and it's really cool so I just like Sir Gawain a lot and so I thought I'd name this knight after him so check out Sir Gawain and the Green Knight it could give you cool ideas for D&D &D missions. I do want to do something like that, where maybe there is this uh, magical knight who lives out, who represents more of a nature. That's the whole thing. The nature storms King Arthur's court, which is civilization. He, like, breaks in. nature. He represents nature in the story. Breaking in and being like, all of this isn't true, in a sense. So, kind of cool. Kind of cool if you're into that type of thing. It is written in like an old English though, so it's kind of, it can be tricky. It took me like a, it takes me a few read-throughs, re and like I said, it's even kind of hard to remember some of the details because there is, the way it's written, it's hard to remember. It's like, wait a minute, what happens? Like, uh, so I'd have to go back and reread it again. Okay. Enough about my boy. Enough about my boy. I'm going to... That's like that's definitely still wet. I'm going to dry brush this white. Again, my white's drying out. I do need to get a new white as well. Dip a little white, brush a little off, just on the tips, just the tip. <laughs> and then we just lightly glaze this. And I might be rushing because it's a little too wet so again there's a point where i'm not going to do it i just realized it's too wet not going to do it it'll make more of a mess although it's funny back to like uh oh i just dry brushed it and mixed all the wet paint together with the white however i mean it, it'll turn into gray it'll give it some off color and you can fix it all right, I decided while that wash is painting again. Uh-oh, cut my head off. Uh-oh. Damn.
just a little bit off. Anyways, I'm going to use a tan. Xandry Dust. Xandry Dust. To do, I'll do the wooden part. Now, um, while I'm waiting, that seems a little bit more dry. Again, just lightly grab some. Now we're just adding that like a little bit of flare. We're talking about flare here, okay? We're talking about adding that flare on the wood. It's like, oh, get those colors on there. Oh, see too much. That's the one thing. Got to be careful. Like, there's a certain level of you just put too much on the brush, and then you do paint over top of the stuff. Again, maybe those dry paints are a little bit better. So maybe that's where, because it's like. Maybe it wouldn't be so harsh if you if you miss, you know, or if you put too much on. Maybe it would be a little more forgiving. Whereas this is like, oops, I just made it a bit too. Basically, like where'd the brown go? You know, I just covered it in tan. Another cool, cool thing about a well, just I'm thinking about it right now, is for like a encounter. If anyone's played Legend of Zelda: Over of Time, the bottom of the well there's the whole Shadow Temple and dungeon. So it could be a centerpiece for an encounter in the sense that there's a well here and apparently it goes, it leads down to some deeper subterranean cavern. So again, back to like, oh, this is a pretty cool um, piece. Yeah, there's a bit of brown at the top. You can see that it's a little too much for my liking. So back to what I said, oh, I, I didn't care and I just, um, let it go. Well, now it's coming back to haunt me. So perhaps, you know, tortoise and the hare, a slow, steady approach might be quicker in the end. Or that classic thing, get it right the first time. Why am I not going to do it right the first time I apply the, the paint? I feel like the jury's out. Let me know what you think, if it's better to go kind of fast and correct little mistakes after, or to take your time and do it right so that you never have to go back and make any corrections. I'd be interested to hear what people think. So while I have that though, I will get a bit more gray if I can find it. There she be. However, I am gonna take a little bit more care. I'm just gonna try and dry brush so that I don't cover over the, too much wash. Just again, a little bit of brown could be cool. But I don't wanna paint gray on top of the black wash so much. So it is like another highlight, treat it like a highlight. I can cover over the brown while I'm dry brushing and highlighting. And like you could even, even as I'm going, I'm like, huh, maybe I will just do, add a little bit more gray. Fifty minutes. Fifty minutes, however, don't take my word for it, because I think I'm going to cut some of those, I'm going to be cutting some of the spaces out. So for me it's fifty minutes, but I'm hoping it won't be fifty minutes after I'm done editing it. <sighs> ah, let's talk about these caps while I have this here. These cap, like, the paint gets in the cap and then it won't close and this, this is one of the paints that did dry up on me or it's drying up on me and I just feel a little bit like I dislike that a lot. <laughs> As anyone would, you know, you purchase something and then the cap fills with paint and then you can't close it and then it dries. Now, there are times when I go through with a toothpick or some sort of metal piece and pry it all out and get it good again. And then I've had the idea of wiping the lid down because I find I, I dab the brush on the rim and then I close the cap on it and that's how the paint gets in the lid. So if I could just always wipe it down, 
I would preserve it better and it would close better. However, it's something I'm still working on. I think even last time I was talking about that, it's just like, that would be the most efficient thing to do uh, in the long run. But I forget, and then you're into the paint job, and then before you know it, you're closing lids and being like, oops, too late now. I'm looking at the handle, I think it's okay. I'm just gonna put silver on it. But again, due to the time, I just don't mind. It's made out of wood, why not, right? It's made out of wood. This is in the farmland. They don't have access to metal. <laughs> Again, any excuse, any excuse to justify my paint job, right? I am gonna use a smaller brush to add some black to the water now that's in there. Just, I think a little bit. I am using a smaller brush because I don't want to drown color out too too much I just kind of want to really lightly lightly apply this stuff ah cool 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 Abed community one of my favorite shows I'd say of all time I just think it's too funny for words so I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to use any words to explain why. <laughs> Just go watch it. However, I will speak of one episode, the D&D &D episode, season two. That's what got me into community. So kind of a funny little story there where that's what kind of really, like I laughed so hard during that episode. I thought it was just too funny. And it's true. It, it kind of kick-started a lot of my like interest in D&D. &D. It wasn't just that, but it's funny how it came out at the right time. Like it was cool to see. I'd never seen, obviously, I didn't really even kind of know what D&D &D was or, you know, I had a vague idea, but kind of seeing them go through it the way they did. And I know they do it in their own style, uh, but I, I feel like it gets it across so great. And uh, so, I guess that's a fun fact about me and how this all started, you know? I got into the channel, but it took a while to decide to do this. I'm not going to concern myself too much with the edge at this point either, because I do like to, the edge around the circumference of the base is to me kind of like the last step. And I want to make sure it's as clean as possible. Because as I dry brush and highlight and add um, wash, green wash and things like that, I just think that every time I, because I feel like right now, well, I want the, I think I am going to do the edge Lauren Green and I'd like to just paint the whole thing Lauren Green right now and hope I don't make a mistake later and then I'd be done, right? However, I know me. I know my reckless wash use in my reckless dry brushing that I rather just not care and then just do the green thing at the end when I know it's all good. And I find I make less mistakes on that than I do on um, maybe the wash drying in a bad way or um, some of the lighter tones going on to the edge like that. I'm better at just painting and not messing up the, uh, the texture that's on the top there. It's almost the most fun part. It's like I see what it can look like and then you just get this final little easy thing you get to do, which is just do, like, I'm not even looking. Look, Ma, no hands, right? Like, so it's almost the most enjoyable part. And you realize like, oh. I'm starting to see like, remember those mistakes we were talking about? I don't, <laughs> what mistakes? And there was never any mistakes. Nice. There's even kind of like a darker gray here because I did kind of wash it a little bit extra, but then like a lighter gray here. I do kind of like that it's not perfect, right? I mean, I don't think if you were to make a well like this that all the stones would match perfectly, obviously, right? And the light wouldn't hit them all the same way. And 
So I prefer that than maybe someone who would be like, but this is painted, I don't know, like perfect or like it's evenly done. I, I prefer like, well, no, I'd rather it not look so good that it almost looks artificial. I don't know. Maybe that's just not, maybe that's crazy talk, but I like the idea that I'm not aiming for perfection in the sense that there's always little imperfections on things like a, like a well or something. So, <laughs> am I justifying again? Nah. Nah. I'm talking sense. I'm talking sense. If you disagree with me, and you can talk some sense into me, and I'll try and listen. Try and bring this in a little bit closer at this point. I don't know how close I can get it. I'm not sure if it's uh, showing. But starting to look real at least, at least from a distance. From a distance. I'm actually liking that night gloom haunt as the water. It's kind of got this bluey, I know, I'm probably again hard to see precisely. However, it's got this bluey, greeny, dark. Again, I wanted this to be out in the wilderness more of a well, so I don't mind that maybe the water's a little more dirty. This is what the poor people drink, right? The peasants in the field. They don't get the they don't get the clean water. They get the green, murky, disgusting water. Again. Another idea is coming to me. Use the well as like someone's poison the well. Classic. Like it, maybe it is true. Who's poison the well? And it's a mystery. Or you're right. The groundwater is contaminated. Perhaps stone giants are beneath the town and messing with the water, and it's actually causing sickness or harm within the village. So you could have players, you know, go in there, get the water, make a nature check, investigation check. What's going on here? Is there a magical component to it? All from one little well. I do find that fun. If you're trying to come up with a scenario, try and pick one thing and go with it. Like maybe one monster or one terrain piece or one setting and just be like, that's what it is. It's all, I'm going to build it all around the well or I'm going to build it all around an ogre that's the most creative one i could think of on the spot pretty terrible right ogre or it's it's all about the one thing and uh sometimes giving yourself that box can actually give you more ideas that you wouldn't have thought of okay on my end of things you can see that i'm very close to finishing however i am going to pause here and I think on the beginning of the next episode, I will show the finished product as just the memory for the video is running low. And I want to make this as simple as possible. So I will show the finished well on the next wet paint dry humor. And come check out. Hopefully I'll put another one out soon. As I said, I'm going to try and do more of these as I can't get games going. So... Look forward to the next one. Uh, as I said, maybe just grab some models, paint along with me, share share some of your thoughts, your tips and tr tricks in the comments below, and we'll just keep chipping away at our collections until we're all done. Am I right? So I'll see you next time. That's all for now. See you later.